Mr. and Mrs. Ruff have a six-year-old daughter, Haley. Three months ago, they brought a little boy into their home who they hope to adopt. Mark is four. He has spina bifida and has been in children's homes all his life. They said, can you possibly come to London for three days? To the home, and therefore we will introduce Mark to you. The house mother, Silla, had told Mark that he was going to have a new mother and father. And, uh, but she didn't tell him actually who it was until he had to go up for one day for an interview with Dr. Bernardo's people at the home in the City of London borough in the meeting there and um, they told us exactly the date in the end when we could have him. So the next time we went back, it was, it was fantastic. We walked down the passage and Mark was coming up and he started saying, I can see you, Mummy. And it was a beautiful feeling, it's super, you know. And um, we went and took it out. We stayed there another three days. And uh, when I left him on the third day, he wound up crying because he didn't want me to go. And I wound up crying because I didn't want to leave him. And they said, well, we could come back on the actual Thursday and pick him up on the Friday. To be in a car is his holy delight. He's been so used to travelling in the hospitals and cars and ambulances and things like this that he associates everything with wheels, I think, and he likes. He sits up in the front, or sometimes if I got a passenger in the front, he'll sit in the back, or he'll even sit on someone's lap if I got a full car. They just love him, and everyone who goes with him. If I haven't got him, they say, well, where's Mark today? Mm. Or I left him with his mother, oh, I'll bring him this afternoon, sort of thing. He actually idolises it, you know. He thinks it's great to be there. You know, it's all different people going to the store. You've got somebody to talk to all the time. He loves it. He's immensely loving because he has got this way about him. I mean, he's been down that market and people really fall over him, you know, they say, oh, it's gorgeous, Pat, you know, can't believe he has a Why would he do that to any other child, you know? But maybe his tendons are a bit more severe, so you notice it more. Uh, if a child, like Haley, if you have a tendon, she'll walk up and she'll say, I'm going up my bedroom. Well, Mark can't do that. He's got to sit it out, and he's, get, and he's sitting there crying. And you're saying to what you're crying for, but normally a child will walk away from you and go in their bedroom. But Mark can't. He's got to stay there, and he's got to be safe with you keep saying to him, well, what you're crying for, you know. It's not the act of looking after him. That's not hard work at all. It's not, it's easy. It's just the emotional side of it, you know, the outside. He's trying this out, he, like we, he's got to get used to, you imagine it, three different people, three different ways of where they live, and all we've got to get used to is him. Sunday, I asked him to clean and clear the table for us to have tea. Haley done her, but I said, well, you can do the same. I put a um, lorry of his on his lap, told him to put it over there. And he turned around and tried crawling on his tummy and cried because he couldn't pull the lorry with him. So I turned him around and I made him sit on the floor, put the lorry on his lap, and I made him walk across the floor with it on his hand. In the end, he said, that was easy, wasn't it, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. Believe me. It's hard. And you think, oh, have I been too hard on him in the end of the evening when you put him to bed? You, you sort of sit down, often Dave and I sit down and we think, I said, Dave, do you think I was a bit hard on him? He says, no, I don't think so. Or uh, um, if we have, you know, I say, well, I try not to be quite so hard next time. You know, I insist he do something. And he says he can't do it, and he sort of goes into little tears about it. And I say, well, I know you can do it. Can I get a name? Come on, man. 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 Come on, man.
You don't want to go for me, are you? Yeah. Oh, I'm getting away from the kitchen. Oh, Come on, then. Come on, then. Quick. You've seen a lot of change in him. He helps himself a lot more. Before, you don't even like to um, do his counters or do them up. Oh, no, you can't. Come on, let's breathe it. You're a big boy. Well, he does, he does them up, he runs down with them, he takes them off, he takes all his clothes off, and he leaves them dressed his half and then dressed his half. Put his jammers on and everything. That's something my husband and I have taught him between us. We, uh, we have a sort of a look to see what one another's doing, so we don't complicate him. So, I mean, say I told him to take his top off first, and if Sarah told him to take his bottom off first, it would get him confused. So we both sort of look and see what one another's doing, and we say, well, we think that's better him to do it that way. It's not so complicated for him. For anybody that's got his disability, I think it's just going to be terrible to think that we are pushing him, pushing him, pushing him yeah. all the time. And we think he's getting, you know, he thinks he's getting nowhere, but we know he is. Because yeah, we've seen a vast different dimension since he's been here. Yeah. He was talking while his baby talked, and um, he had a doctor come here two weeks ago to say he had a speech therapy. And she took one of that, and she said, oh no, we don't need no speech therapy at all now. What have you got? Sure. Well, you, you've been on top of the coal bunker. Yes. I thought you had. Yeah. Playing in the sand as well, but I thought you were close. <laughs>